today, not only you, but everyone around you can be saved because of the decision that you make. The future of your family and friends. It doesn't matter if you had a background when you believe in Jesus and obey Him. You will see God's goodness and mercy in your own life and in the lives of the ones you love. Hello, my name is Lina and I am from Bogota, Colombia. I am a wife, I am a mother of one and the daughter of Pastor Adriana, a woman whose good example has formed my life and it is a privilege to me to be in the UK for the King's Church International Women Conference and to meet so many great ladies. And each woman, as well as each man, has a great destiny and today Women are often devalued in the world, but in the Bible puts the highest value in a woman. And right back in Genesis, we read in chapter 3, verse 15, that God said, I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. It will crush your head, and you will strike its heel. Here, God was saying that the seed of woman will crush, crush the head of Satan. And this is a promise that was fulfilled when Christ came into the world, born of a woman to defeat Satan. And Mary, who was just a poor young woman, knew that she was highly favored to give birth to the Messiah. And throughout the ministry of Jesus, we see that he gave his he gave high value to women and treated them with great kindness. As a result, many women followed Jesus and were his disciples and support his ministry financially as well. Women were last to stay at the cross and the first to the empty tomb. All through history, women have been some of the strongest and most faithful followers of Jesus. And you, today, can be a Christian woman who can make a big difference in the life of many people. And you can start with your own family. And that's why today I want to talk to you about a woman who had a bad past but gave her family a great future. And this woman's name is Rahab. And the Bible says that she was a prostitute. Her life was not very pretty and she was socially worthless. But although her past was bad, her future was bright. And in fact, she's mentioned as one of the great examples of faith in Hebrews chapter 11. And we first hear about her story when Joshua sent two spies to Jericho in where Rahab lived. Joshua 2 from verse 2 says, The king of Jericho was told, Look, some of the Israelites have come tonight, here tonight to spy out the land. So the king of Jericho sent this message to Rahab. Bring out the men who came to you and enter your house, because they have come to spy out the whole land. But the woman, Rahab, had taken the two men and hidden them. She said, Yes, the men came to me, but I did not know where they had come from. A dust when it was time to close the city gate, they left. And I don't know which way they went. So go after them quickly. You may catch up with them. But she had taken them up to the roof and hidden them under the stalks of flax she had laid out on the roof. She was a woman who was not from God's people. She was part of one of the people that the Lord had told the Israelites that they were that they will conquer. In fact, they were a people that they were going to disappear. That was her destiny along her people in Jericho. But when we read the full story, we see that her ending was totally different because of the decision she made. So what led her 
to make completely out of the ordinary decisions? What led her to prefer God's people over his own people? And what we see here at first is that she feared God. Verses 8 to 11 says, Before the spies lay down for the night, she went up on the roof and said to them, I know that the Lord has given you the land and that a great fear of you has fallen on us so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did to Sion and Og, the two kings of the Amorites east of the Jordan, whom you completely destroyed. When we heard of it, our hearts melted in fear and everyone's courage failed because of you. For the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on the earth. This woman knew that God was real. She knew that the Israelites had seen God's awesome power at the Red Sea and when they destroyed all the cities. Rahab and her people were so fearful that they were not that they were now coming to Jericho. What really scared them was they understood that the God of the Israelites was God in heaven above and on the earth below. And Rahab had supreme respect and submission to Jehovah, the God of the Israelites, above the gods of her own people. We, too should, we should too have a proper respect for God. As Proverbs 9 verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And Proverbs 31 30 says, Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is worthy of praise. Rahab's destiny started to change from the moment she recognized the greatness and power of God. The new value that was coming to her life started when she valued God. And this led her to do something very, very important. And I want to tell you secondly, that she asked for the mercy of God. And we read in Joshua 2, 12, Now, please swear to me by the Lord but that you will show kindness to my family, because I have shown kindness to you. Give me a sure sign that you will spare the lives of my father, my mother, my brothers and sister, and all who belong to them, and that you will save us from death, our lives for your lives. The men assure her, if you don't tell what we are doing, we will treat you kindly and faithfully. And when the Lord give us the land. So she let them down by a rope through the window for her house, for the house she lived in was part of the city wall. And she said to them, go to the hills so the pursuers will not find you. Hide yourself there three days until they return and then you will go your way. Rahab feared God, but she also believed that she could receive kindness from these Israelite spies. She probably didn't receive a lot of kindness in her own life before, but she still hoped for kindness for herself and for her family. She knew that her only hope was to plead for mercy, and that's what the spies promised to her. And this is a great picture of how we should come to God because He is a God of love and mercy. He is full of love who wants to forgive us of our sins and save us from destruction. And Hebrews 4, 16 says, Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And thirdly, we see that she chose to obey and trust God. Rahab decided to completely come onto God's, God's side. She did what she had been told to do. Joshua 2 verses 17 to 21 says, Now the man has said to her, This oath you made to us, you made us swear, will not be binding on us, unless when we enter the land you have tied this scarlet cord in the window through which you let us down. 
And unless you have brought your father and your mother, your brothers and all your family into your house, if any of them go outside your house into the street, their blood will be on their own heads. We will not be responsible. As for those who are in the house with you, their blood will be in our head if a hand is laid on them. But if you tell what we are doing, we will be released from the oath you made us swear. Agreed, she replied. Let it be as you say. So she sent them away and they departed. And she tied the scarlet cord in the window. Her trust in God caused her to take action, immediately action and to obey God. And James 2, 24 to 26 says, a person is declared righteous by works and no by faith alone. Likewise, what not even the prostitute Rahab declared righteous by works when she entertained the spies and held them flee another way. For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. Rahab's faith did not remain just as a thought because that will be a dead faith. It will only be an illusion. Her faith was seen by her actions. She hid the spies. She made an agreement with them. She tied the red cord to the window. She did wait for the spies to go back and she didn't give the report. She didn't delay until she knew that the Israelites were about to invade Jericho. She believed and she acted immediately. And that's what we must do. We don't have to put a red card in our windows, but we do have to believe that the red blood that Jesus shed at the cross can save us from our sins. We need to identify ourselves with Christ right now. We need to start immediately to live a new life as a believer. Rahab, despite her terrible past, she understood that this was her moment of decision and from that day on, she lived according to that. Her faith changed her value and that took her off from the list of prostitutes and onto the list of Bible heroes. We read in, 11, in Hebrews 11, 31, it says, By faith, Rahab the harlot did not perish with the disobedient, having received the spies in peace. Many of us have heard the word of God and we may have been coming to the church for a long time. Maybe we have heard many promises from God, but we have to come to the moment when, you, when we really believe yourself have to take action to follow Jesus and to live differently for him. For many years, me, I heard about God when I went to the church with my mom and I saw many testimonies of many people from the church, starting with my mom's testimony. And for years, I heard a lot of preaching, but I was just a listener until the time in a conference in Bogota, something happened. I discovered my own personal faith in God. I believed that Jesus died on the cross for me and I made my decision to follow him. And this is exactly what Rahab experienced. Her moment on the, of decision arrived. And so it is your moment of decision today. And this is why finally we see she saved her whole family because of her obedience to God. In the moment when the walls of Jericho were falling and everyone around them were being killed, Rahab and all her family were rescued. We read in Joshua 6, 24 to 25, Joshua said to the two men who had spied out the land, go into the prostitute's house and bring her out and all who belong to her in accordance with your oath to her. So the young men who had done the spying went in and brought out Rahab, her father, her mother, her brothers and sisters and all, all who belonged to her. They brought out her entire family and put them in a place outside in the camp, of, the camp of Israel. Then they burned the whole city and everything in it. But Joshua 
spared Rahab's the prostitute with her family and all who belonged to her because she did them because what she did to the men Joshua sent as a spies to Jericho because of Rahab's faith and action her dad was saved, her mom was saved, her brothers were saved, her sisters were saved, anyone closely to her were saved. And today, not only you, but everyone around you can be saved because of the decision that you make, the future of your family and friends. It doesn't matter if you had a background when you believe in Jesus and obey him, you will see God's goodness and mercy in your own life and in the lives of the ones you love. This happened in my family as well. My mom became a Christian. She became a real follower of Jesus. And for six years, I criticized her and many of our family criticized her, but she left everything behind for Jesus. And today, my two brothers and I, we are Christians. I got married with a Christian man and already my three-year-old daughter she loves Jesus and what the Lord has done for us what the Lord did for Rahab he can do it for you and for your family just put your faith in Jesus and do it today do it today because you can change your generations this is a picture of me my mom and my daughter three generations now that we love the Lord, that we serve Jesus, and that now we are experiencing a very different life than we experienced before. And today, I wanna pray with you. If you are just coming for the first time, if you're just watching for the first time a Christian service, if you just heard this story for the first time, I want you to pray with me because you also can experience the mercy of God. You can experience a different future than what you think you are going to receive. And I want you to close your eyes and say, Lord, I want to know you. Jesus, I want to know that what you did on the cross was for me and can save me and can, and can forgive me from my sins. And you can say to Jesus, Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Forgive me because I was apart from you. I was apart from everything that you say in your word. But today, I, can, I ask you, please enter into my heart. I want to live my life for you right now. I want to experience what Rahab experienced in her life. A totally different ending of her life. And from now on, I want to live my life according to your word, according to your teaching. And I want to also my family to live a life for you. I want to change the future of my life, but I want to change the future, the future of many around me, my family, my mother, my father, my sister, my brothers, everyone. In the name of Jesus, I prayed. Amen. And also, if you, if you have been coming to the church for many years, if you are a Christian, I want to pray with you. I want to pray for your generations. I want to pray that your faith will be strength and you can live a fully life with Jesus and you can enjoy all his blessings. Lord, we pray to you today for our generations. It doesn't matter the past, doesn't matter our background, but we today want to make a decision for you and we want to change the destiny of our generations. We fear you, Lord. We love you with all our minds, with all our heart. We love you, Lord. And we believe, we have faith, we have faith that you can change not only our lives, but our families, our sons and daughters, our parents. We believe that you are God above and God on earth. We believe everything belongs to you. And we declare today that our families belong to you. 
Our destiny belongs to you. Every day of our lives from now on belong to you. And we will live by faith and know by sight. We will act by faith. We will live a, 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 live, a life faith, not a dead faith. We will live a faith to show your love to everyone around us and especially to our family. We declare, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that this is a time of decision and everyone who has to make a decision today will do it. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. King's Church International is a multi-generational, multi-racial church with over 50 nationalities represented and it began with just five people in Slough during World War II. Today our congregations meet on Sundays in Windsor UK, Westminster London and in Robertson South Africa. But throughout the week we meet in many different areas in smaller groups known as life groups which are the heart of the life of the church. We have age-specific programmes for children and youth. And we also sponsor a Christian school in Windsor, which started in 2012, as well as supporting several schools in West Africa. Our focus as a church is on sharing the good news of Jesus, locally and globally, and developing committed disciples of Jesus and forming them as leaders. We follow a process known as the G12 vision, following the example of Jesus in training 12 disciples. The G12 vision, which was pioneered in one of the world's largest churches in Bogota, Colombia, is very similar to the approach of 18th century evangelist John Wesley, which brought lasting personal and social transformation in the UK and throughout the world. If you want to find out more about our ministry or get connected with us, please go to kcionline.org forward slash connect. God bless you.